Hello. I have never done this before. Hopefully you can hear me. (laughs) No, not sore. It feels just a little too thick, and I have some time, so I'm going to start working on my hands. I'm realizing how much I jerk my hands back and forth while I do this, and I hope it's still filming okay. I also hope you can't hear my breath too loud. I'm like right next to the microphone. Does it feel raw when you're done? Only if I go too deep. I guess the difference would be that with like regular skin, you know, you have like a certain amount of sensitivity. I don't know because I've never had regular hand skin, but like when the callus grows thick, I can't feel very much at all. So it goes back to being just able to feel anything, which doesn't feel too sensitive to me. But yeah, if I go too deep, it'll be kind of, tender for a day or two. I'm glad you could watch it all day long because, man, I got to do it so often. There'll be a lot of lives. Also, I haven't really set it up yet, but I am going to put all these lives on my YouTube. See, there we go. I just did that little section. I know it's really pink, but it feels great. I can actually feel my fingernail, whereas like over here, I can just kind of feel the pressure of it, but I can't actually feel the details of it. Um, I could go like up to a month, but then I would be able to make a fist like this. So how often do I have to do it? I prefer every 10 to 14 days. I have never had a hand injury because I can't feel it, but I do get like paper cuts and um, blisters sometimes and I don't even know they're there. And then I see them, I'm like, what, what is that? This blade might be getting dull. I probably have to switch it to a fresh one. This tool is called a callus shaver. Mine is a custom one that my husband made a handle for, but you can find them if you just go to a drugstore or look on Amazon. The top will always look like that. Have I told the doctor about the skin? Oh my God. Yes. (laughs) I've actually almost never... Uh, met a doctor in my life who had any idea what this was, and usually I'm the one educating them. Um, So at this point, when I go to the doctor's office, I just come in and say, look, I have this. Here's all the literature. Here's the term. Go Google it. And usually they call me like a couple days later and go like, oh my gosh, can you come back in? I want to take pictures. I want to show all my colleagues. It's, It's that rare. Do I ever have issues with getting my nails done? I do my own nails, actually, which is something else I'll be doing here on TikTok. Um, and I just don't like going because most nail techs don't really know what to do with my skin. So they're kind of like, they're very nervous to cut too deep, to hurt me, to, they just don't know what they're getting into. Oh my God, I have to take a deep breath here. I've never done a live before, so I just need to like chill a little bit. Um, I actually started getting my nails done because all my friends in high school had like acrylic nails. So I went to a nail salon and they were the ones who helped me understand that I could cut the skin down because it grows, it used to grow up on the underside of my nail. And that was really painful. And like the quick went up there too. So they'd cut into it and it would bleed and they'd put iodine on it. But that 
getting my nails done that way is what actually helped me get to having regular nails instead of um, having like the skin growing all the way up underneath the nails. And so then since high school, which was like 20 years ago, I just have maintained that so I can have normal nails. Some people with this condition, their nails like start to grow up. I've had it since birth. By the way, guys, this is Jason in here. He's my best friend and he's helping me moderate since I've never done this before and I'm nervous. Does the extra skin hurt or itch or anything? Only when it gets really thick. It starts to become like wearing a really hard, if you've ever got super glue on your finger, like how it just like kind of is numb to sensation because it doesn't flex. It feels like that all over my whole hand. I've never heard of palmer plantar pustulosis. I can swipe right. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Did the deep cracks hurt? Yes, they they will crack. And then they will become cuts, which bleed. And um, if you let them go too long, they will just keep cracking more and more every day until they get so deep that like it takes a really long time to heal. But I try to not let it get to that point. There's like these big shaves like I'm doing now, which is for my hands like about every two weeks and for my feet about every two months. But then I do maintenance almost daily. So whether it's filing or exfoliating or using the clippers just around the nails... I'm just always maintaining it so that it, uh, you know, doesn't start cracking and doesn't get too thick where it's uncomfortable. So I did my fingertips yesterday, so I won't be doing a lot of fingertips in this video because they're already pretty thin. See, like I accidentally went a little too thin there. It's fine though. I mean, it doesn't like hurt, but it's definitely going to be more sensitive than the other places I'm shaving. Does it ever peel and pull? No, not really. <laughs> so many people saying uh, they would love to do this for me. That's awesome. I'm a bit of a control freak, so I think I'll end up doing it myself my whole life. But there might be a time when I'm older and I actually need someone to do it for me. Then I'll know who to call. <laughs> Hi. So like this particular part of my fingertip is feeling thicker than it should for having been clipped yesterday. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna clip it a little bit. So I squeeze it over and over till I get to a point where there's no nerve like resistance. My nerves aren't going, ah, don't clip that. And then I can clip it, it doesn't hurt. Thank you, I seem like a sweet person. Google EPPK to learn more. Thank you, Jason. Uh, you might want to add diffuse EPPK. Otherwise, the search engine like will give you companies with that initialism as their name and stuff. But EPPK skin condition will probably get you there too. Is it by a gene mutation? Yes. Um, specifically the keratin 9 and in some cases also the keratin 1 gene which is a gene that's only expressed, meaning it only affects the specific hand, uh, skin on your hands and feet. So um, just where that skin grows, you know how you have fingerprints in your hands, like the palms of your hands will get soggy in a bath. It's just that specific skin. Other people with other varieties of this disease, it also affects like the skin on their lips and their soft membranes, like around their eyes or can't think of anywhere else genitalia but I do not have that issue Sarah my family and I have the same thing Woo! it's amazing to meet other people who have it thank you for joining <clears throat> do I get sweat yes it takes a while to permeate through the callus to the top though and generally just makes it really soft but once I start shaving it, you'll see it gets kind of glossy. That is the sweat finally coming out. My body's like relieved, like, oh, we can sweat. Mm. 
Do I ever cut myself by accident? Only if I'm like really not paying attention. Does anyone else in my family have it? No, except for my son. Somebody else just asked if both my kids have it. No, just one of them. The other kid has her father's skin, a.k.a. normal skin. Zada Michelle, you tried to search online and couldn't find anything. It's super rare. That is also how I self-diagnosed um, in like 2005. Some of you all are probably not old enough <laughs> to remember a day before Google. But in the early 2000s, Google was invented and rapidly became the bestest search engine there was. And then they came out with other things like being able to search scholarly articles. So one day in college, I was just sitting there like, oh, I wonder if I search like super calloused hands and feet, whether I'll find anything. And I was going through the image search and I saw a picture of hand. It looked exactly like mine. And it was a, a pivotal moment in my life because I learned the name of this disease, like not something similar, but actually the picture of the hands and feet on the internet could have been my hands and feet. So I learned more and more and more and more. And now after two decades of research and learning and following it, I, I know exactly what I have and I know a lot more about it. I don't get tired doing it. This is different for me because I'm like bending over the counter and doing it on the camera. Usually I sit while I'm watching a show or listening to a podcast or on the phone or something. And so it just kind of, you know, I'd be doing those things anyway, but I'll do it while I'm doing this. Is it annoying? Yes. I mean, I don't know any other reality, so I don't know what it would be like to not have it, but it gets irritating. Like, that's why I'm shaving them today. I could wait another couple weeks, but this thickness here, it's, um, it's to the point where, like, making a fist feels really tight. What really compels me to shave it is when it starts getting so thick that it won't absorb lotion. When I find myself lotioning my hands, like, every 20 minutes all day long, and they're just feeling greasy and not actually hydrated, it's time to do it. Does it hurt? No, it's not an immune system disease. It's not presenting because of imbalances or virus or anything else in my system. The other things that might cause, or detox, the other things that might cause skin issues. So there's not like inflammation. It's not like a rash. It just, uh, it's like your skin, the way it grows and exfoliates itself, except mine doesn't exfoliate itself right here. And it grows like 10 times faster than normal skin and 10 times thicker. Have they found any sort of treatments to help me not produce so much keratin? There have been lots of clinical trials. It's such a rare disease that there's not a lot of study going on about it. But over the years, there have been different clinical trials and different experimental trials to see if anything will help. And so far, nothing has really made a significant enough change that it's become a recommended treatment. But they, the people are trying in fact, there's a uh, psi RNA vaccine that was recently tested in Greece, I think, and um, was fruitless, but at least some geneticists are trying. I can't imagine being numb in my hands. I'm sorry, you have to deal with that. It's very rare. In fact, if I look these days and I try to find a statistic on it, there aren't any about how many people have it, but uh, I remember reading way back in the day when I first was learning about this, that it was assumed to affect 0.004% of the population, which is something like with our current world population, like 70,000 people worldwide, very small. Vaseline, man, so many people recommending Vaseline, not like um, I haven't tried, but it doesn't help. So Vaseline isn't really absorbed by our skin. I'm not a chemist or a biologist or a doctor, but it's basically just a protective coating that blocks moisture from escaping. So if you have dryness, putting Vaseline on the skin will hold in your natural oils and your sweat, all of your natural moisturizers, which will help that area stay really moist while your body heals it. In my case, there is no healing being done. My body's not sending anything over here to try and fix it. Um, so Vaseline just traps in the moisture and makes my hands... It's hard to describe, but it makes them feel like they can't breathe. Like the feeling of if you've ever had a cast or like a latex bandage or something where like the skin becomes really rubbery and stinky and gross underneath. That's what happens to my hands and feet when I put Vaseline on them. They just don't breathe at all and uh, it does nothing but suffocate them. 
And it doesn't soak in, so they're just slimy and nasty when I'm done putting Vaseline on them, and then I have to wash it off, at which point we're back to square one. No, it'll never go, so it doesn't come back anymore. I will have this my whole life. Unless we invent some sort of, like, gene therapy that's actually reliable, at which point we'll eliminate a lot of other diseases as well. One can hope. What would happen if you don't remove the skin? Well, if you want to see some kind of grotesque and frightening photos, you can search the name of this disease into Google and see just exactly what happens when it's untreated. Kind of makes your hands do this and your nails get all deformed and you can't move them at all. And I would prefer not to experience that. So I shave it off all the time and it never gets thick enough to be debilitating. It comes back. How fast does it come back? Um, How do you qualify that? I, this thickness level that's here, if you look like here, how thick it is, that's about 10 days. You can see it grows unevenly too. So there's thin parts and there's thicker parts. That's about 10 days growth. Um, If you've seen any of my videos where I'm shaving my foot, that's like a 45 to 60 day growth. I don't know exactly how long it was between my foot shavings. Because I also do maintenance in between. So even when you see like a full shave video, that's not the actual full growth for that period of time because I will have done some exfoliating and filing and stuff in between. (sighs) Does it get under your nails when they're long? Yes. Yeah, I talked about this in the beginning of the video, but it used to grow up the inside of my nails. These are my natural nails. It used to grow up on the inside and actually the quick was going up all the way to the tip, even at a length like this. Um, But over the years, I've been able to hack it back down to where the quick is down here, and I have somewhat normal-looking nails. Is it uncomfortable? Is it itchy? No, not really. Can I use finger ID on my phone? No. (laughs) I was so happy when they came out with face ID. Um, Let's see if I can give an example. So if, if I can get it to focus, you can see I do have the fingerprint swirls. But if I were to fingerprint this right now, it'd be absolutely just smooth like a blotch because there's, I've just shaved off all the ridges. And as it grows really thick, well, unfortunately, I just did my fingertips, so I can't give you an example, but the callus will completely obscure all the fingerprint marks. Does it hurt to do this? No, it feels great. Imagine having like super glue all over your hands and they're like dry and crackly and have very little sensation and... Um, you know, you can't bend them and you can't feel anything. And then imagine finally being able to peel that off and like the freedom and sensation you'd have afterward. I think that's probably a good example. Try to use an electric drill. Oh my gosh, you guys are so into the electric drills. I have an electric drill nail file and I will do it on video at some point to show you why it doesn't work. If this were a buildup of dead skin, which I mean, technically it is, but if this were a buildup of dead skin, it would file off with a nail drill, but it's not dry. It's not dead. It's extremely well moisturized and a lot of it is still living. Oh, I guess I did cut myself. See, I can't even feel that I cut it. It's just, there's some blood. I'm sorry. And so the drill just kind of gets super gummed up and shreds the skin. Like if you were trying to sand off leather. If you've ever taken sandpaper to fabric, that's what happens to my hands. So it just kind of makes a mess and it makes them feel really weird and scratchy. I prefer the smooth feeling when I shave them. Why don't I use a peeling mask? I'm, that's also something I'm going to do in videos to share why it doesn't really work. I'm excited to try because there's several I haven't tried yet, but um, In general, those things, again, are removing dead skin that is still clinging to the living skin, whereas this is still technically living skin. So it it doesn't really permeate any of the layers. It doesn't make it peel off. It just makes it really weird and rubbery feeling for a few days. Can I get my nails done? Yes. I prefer to do them myself, though, because as I previously mentioned, I'm a control freak. And also because doing my nails involves doing my cuticles, which are the same type of skin. So they're very thick and I will push them back and clip them and clip all around the edges of my nails and then drill off the gel polish and do a new layer. So I just, I like doing it myself. This is a genetic mutation. 
I have to do it every one, well, 10 days to 14 days, about two weeks. Do I wrinkle in the shower bath? No, not the same. Um, if you've ever had a callus and it like swells up with water, like a sponge, that's what happens. So actually I don't go swimming or bathing for very long, like not more than an hour because it will swell up like a huge sponge and I like can't even make a fist and all the cracks are super pronounced and uh. my mom was a swimmer. And so we went swimming all the time as a child and it was, it was painful for me if I stayed in too long. Just my hands and feet. Oh, I'm starting to realize I'm going to spend most of this life answering the same questions over and over. No judgment to you guys. I'm grateful you have questions. This is a callus shaver. If you just Google it, you'll find a whole bunch that look just like this. This handle is custom, but the top part, this is what they all look like. I am not enough of a biologist or dermatologist to answer that question. Is it an abnormality of the connective tissue? It's a mutation of the keratin 9 gene expressed in the palmal plantar skin. So that's the best answer I can give you. At what age was I diagnosed? So I don't know if you guys are going to like this or not, but I have never been officially diagnosed until I told the doctor what I had and brought them the literature. And then they were like, oh, okay, you have this. So I guess that was after I discovered it on Google, but I didn't see a doctor for years after that. So maybe around age 20 six is when I finally went to a doctor and said, I think I have this. And he looked over everything and was like, yep, you have it. And that, that was that. There's no treatment. The insurance can't do anything for me unless I wanted to have somebody else remove the skin, which I don't because I'm picky about it. And um, so it just never really mattered to me to get a diagnosis. There's no cream I can use to make it go away. Can I have that if I have a little bit of hard skin on my foot and I cut with scissors? Can you have this disease? No. There are varieties where it doesn't grow all over the whole hand. And if you want to Google it, it's EPPK unathost, U-N-N-A-T-H-O-S-T, two separate words, unathost. And that stuff grows like you might have a patch here and a patch here and a patch up here and the rest is normal skin. But in in the Vorner type, which is the kind I have, V-O-R-N-E-R, it it grows over the whole thing. And there's this sharp demarcation where it ends. I know it looks red and maybe irritated, but it's not. That's just how my body has figured out to transition between these two skins. Do I do this daily? How often do I do it? Every 10 days to 14 days, typically about every two weeks, but like sometimes it's just bugging me. Like today I could have waited until maybe like Monday, but I didn't want to. How does it feel after taking it off? Glorious. Let me tell you. What would happen if I didn't do it every 10 days? Jason, thank you for keeping on top of telling people what to Google. My hands would slowly start to solidify in place. Um, I have an ex-boyfriend who used to call them my bare hands because I would just hold them like this, like my paws, and I wouldn't bend my fingers much. Now that I take better care of them, I really can move my fingers all around, and I'm more animated with my hands. Um, But back when I was learning how to take care of them when I was a teenager and a young 20-something, I would, I would just kind of keep them in position. But what happens if it keeps growing and growing and growing is they stay in that position. And if you were to go like this, it would crack at every single flex point. <coughs> ah, so, and also it can kind of cause your hand to get mutated if you don't shave it for your whole life. Like the bends in your joints and stuff will kind of get fixed. Have I ever burned my hands? Yes. Um, doesn't feel like a burn though. Just smells like burning skin. What if my kids get bullied and take their life? I don't think that will happen. Thank you for your concern. Um, It's not fun to joke about anybody killing themselves. But, uh, uh, man, mindset and attitude. If you have a lot of love and support, you can get through anything, I think. Do I have sensation in my hands? Less so the thicker the skin gets. So right here, I can feel my nail gliding along even super gently. I can feel all that, but over here, I can barely feel the nail. It's like I can feel mild pressure where it's pushing, but I can't feel it. 
listen, I'm not going to debate bullying and suicide rates with you, but support networks are everything. I have used a file. I wonder if I could show you guys right now. Let me get my heaviest grit file. Okay, so this is like, which side is the rougher one? 80 grit? It has not taken off anything. Let me do it for a while longer. Uh, I cannot even feel this. It, it's actually made all the ridges stand up and it's made it frayed. And so now it feels rough instead of smooth like this. So I'm just not interested in filing. Also, I completely gunked up my file doing that. Ugh. I know there are other pedicure files and I might buy some just to do some example videos and talk about it more, but I already know they don't work. Thank you, unaliving. I will not use the banned language again. The stainless steel foot files do even worse. I had a couple, um, they're in the trash now. Um, they do it way worse than this. Imagine taking a strip of leather that's finished and smooth and tanned and all that, and then taking a metal file to it. What would happen to that leather? It would fray, maybe you don't have any experience doing this, but it would fray and shred and generally start looking like suede, but it would dry out because it's skin. And so then I have like the roughest, most scratchy hands ever. And I don't, I don't like that. What am I doing? I am taking off this callus on my hands, which um, I have as a genetic mutation. Oh, that feels good. There's no medical moisturizers or creams that I have found that are beneficial. Um, I just use St. Ives Hydrating Lotion, which soaks in better than any other lotion I've ever tried. I've been religiously attached to it for 10 or more years now. It used to be called 24-Hour Moisture. Did it start as a small patch and gradually spread? When I was an infant, it was just on my fingertips and here and like here. And then with, within the first year of my life, it spread and has stayed the same ever since. My parents don't have it. Thank you. Yeah, I know it's kind of really pink right now because I'm applying pressure. Disregard the little spots that are bleeding. But um, it's because I've been putting pressure on it and also because this has been tight and it's finally relieved. So my body's sending blood in here, I assume, to this just a response to the, the activity. But they will come back to being about this color by tomorrow. The lotion is St. Ives Hydrating. Um, it has a picture of an avocado on the front. And it soaks in so well. It's like a more of a water-based lotion. All of those heavy creams like Working Hands and um, Gold Bond, they don't soak in at all. So they just kind of leave an oily residue all over the top and it builds up. Like I need to lotion my hands every half an hour about every half an hour all day long. And so if I'm using something like a gold bond or working hands, it will just get so gunked up with that oily, heavy cream and it's not soaking in and it's not serving me. So instead I prefer to use one that soaks in and dries out a lot faster, but actually has the penetration to keep them moisturized all day long. Oh, somebody asked something I wanted to answer. Does it make your nails and hair grow faster? I haven't noticed a change in my hair. My sisters and I all kind of have the same hair, so I don't think it really affects that. But um, yeah, my nails grow super thick, super thick. I mean, I cannot flex this at all. And uh, they do have a little gel polish on them, but like I was sloppy and in a hurry. So when I did my nails a couple weeks ago, I just did like one layer of sparkles plus a top coat. So it's really not that thick, but there's no flex. They are rock hard and they grow super fast. This is less than two weeks growth. Okay, let's see. My fingers are almost done on this hand. I have to do this every couple weeks. Have I tried nail drills? Yeah. If you were here a minute ago when I was explaining why filing doesn't really work and actually the rougher the file, the worse it is. Um, nail drills and callus e-files, I've found just do the same thing. I'm tempted to pull out my electric nail file so you guys can see, maybe later. Is it hard to clip my nails then? No. Probably tougher than with thin nails, but nail clippers work fine. No fingerprints. 
Yeah, look, so I do have the swirls. You can kind of see the resemblance of a fingerprint here. But of course, I've shaved it so it's completely smooth, and an ink on this finger on a piece of paper would just be a, you know, finger shaped dot fully filled in. And then when the callus grows in, it all, you know, gets convoluted and becomes nothing resembling a fingerprint. It is hereditary. Does it run in the family? But um, nobody in my family has it but me, and now my son has it. Does it hurt if I overdo it? Yes. We're getting into the satisfying part here. There is no cure. Some wonderful researchers have been working on a cure for my entire lifetime, but none has been found. If I leave it on and don't shave it, it grows really thick and begins to deform my hand. I do this every other week, not multiple times a week. And in between shavings, or in the case of this week, two days before shaving, I did my fingertips, which I made a video about uh, doing this hand's fingertips. I still have footage from the other hand I haven't put up yet. How long does it take to shave them completely? Well, I got to go get my kids from school at two o'clock. So <laughs> we'll see if I can finish them by two, two to three hours, kind of depending on whether I did my fingertips recently, how soft the skin is, how much I'm paying attention versus like paying attention to a TV show or something. So it just depends. And you might know I'm a little ADHD scatterbrained. I do have ADHD. So I might like do most of it here and then go over here and then go over here and then come back to here. And I'm sorry for my squirrel brain. Thank you guys for joining. This is fucking crazy. <laughs> if you would have told me even a year ago, even two months ago that I would be live on the internet shaving my hands, I would have told you you were lying, that you were out of your mind. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Hold on. Yeah, I'm from the USA West Coast. I love this comment. You can commit all the crimes. <laughs> I still have a face and I have my morals, my scruples, but I could. The wrist part is giving me anxiety. Oh no, it's actually really thick here, so there's not really a risk. So the way the tool is angled, it, it's going to bump up against my skin here and I can balance this on my regular arm skin and it's, it's not even going to touch it. Like, look, if I, sh if I rub this against my skin, nothing, there's nothing to grip onto. It's so smooth. So it's only when it touches the callus that it grabs on. You'd peel it off all damn day. I'll tell you, when I was a kid, I chewed at it and peeled at it and picked at it all day, every day, which is probably why I still have all of my like oral stimming. Like I want to be chewing gum or drinking a coffee or sucking on a candy or something. Um, but I have learned to keep my hands out of my mouth because when I chew on the skin, just to like get the little fiddly bits that like start to grow over here, it makes it so jagged and just Fs it up so much worse than if I just handle it with the tool. So with my maturity, I don't do that anymore. But my son definitely does chew on his hands and I have to stop him all the time. And that's usually when I, that's my cue. Like we need to work on your hands because you're, you're just irritated by them all the time and chewing too much. <sighs> These are my real nails. And does it affect them? They grow super thick. Like I cannot bend it at all. And um, that's less than two weeks growth from like being short. So they grow really fast. Is it harder to do than the other hand? <laughs> Just when it comes to shaving and clipping, I am ambidextrous. So no, actually. Although when I do this hand, I tend to move my hand more because this is still my dominant hand. So we'll see how that films. If I soak it in water, it shaves worse. Kind of like the example we did where like I'm pulling it along the top of my hand. It kind of is scratching, but like it's not shaving the skin off. And when I soak them, 
that's what happens. So this tool becomes useless. So instead, I just moisturize them super well all day. I pick a day when like they're just at the right flexibility and moisture level, which today happens to be today. Here's the unshaved one. It's really soft and pliable and flexible right now because I lotioned it all day yesterday and all day today. And it's just, I haven't had like a deep bath or soak to remove all the oils. And this is perfect condition for shaving. Do I ever have someone else do it for me in a spa? No. Um, it's just not a normal callus and nobody knows how to handle it. Have I ever badly cut myself? It's happened. Uh, before I found this tool when I was still a preteen and teenager, I did it with a knife and I cut myself badly all the time, but I am much better now. Does my son have ADHD too? I do not know. I, I think uh, both my kids probably have autism ADHD like I do, but I haven't had them tested. They're, they're doing great in life. So unless, unless we need to like have modified education plans or adaptive stuff in the classroom for them, I just haven't done it yet. Do I soak my hands in a moisture glove? No. Stuff doesn't soak in like that. So generally it's not beneficial to have them uh, deprived of oxygen and air like that. Why do I do that? Because if I don't, I will be completely crippled. It is crippling. So the reason I do it for anybody who just showed up is because I grow this heavy callus all over my hands starts here. This redness is not irritation or inflammation. This is simply the transition point and how my body handles transitioning between the two skins. But this callus will keep growing thicker, 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 thicker until the point where my hands can't bend and make a fist. Or if I hold them in a fist position as it grows thicker, like say for months, I were to just kind of hold my hand protectively like this, then if I opened it, all the flex points would crack wide open and bleed. So I choose to take it off every one to two weeks. It's more like 10 days to 14 days. And it, um, it stays functional. It's not eczema. It's not immune related. It doesn't hurt. It feels great. I have a rare genetic mutation called, get your pencils, <laughs> diffuse epidemolytic palmal plantar keratoderma Warner type or you could call it diffuse EPPK if you're trying to Google it. Specifically, I have the Vorner, V-O-R-N-E-R, sub-variety. It doesn't itch. There is no cure. It doesn't smell, except like the lotion I use. Does it get annoying? Yes. My husband came up with the channel name. Thank you. <laughs> For anybody wondering, my moderator, Jason, is my best friend. He is the one who told me I should do these videos on YouTube, and I told him he was crazy. Guess what? He was right. By the way, Jason, I think you should have got that email. I did actually send you that package, and it's related to what I just said. If you can <laughs> come up with an idea of what it might be. <clears throat> can I squeeze my hand like this? Like this? So look how well I can make a fist with this hand now that I've shaved most of it. We still have a little bit here to go in my thumb, but the rest of it is shaved off now. I can make a fist. This one, oh man, that hurts. I re it's really uncomfortable to go farther than this. So this is my fist, and that's my fist when it's shaved. So much more flexibility. It hurts to go more than this. Thank you for loving my nails. I am going to be doing them on lives and on TikTok along with my fingertips and hands and everything else. Do I have fingerprints? No. I don't. If you look really close, you can see the swirls. So they're there, but the callus grows so thick um, that it obscures the fingerprints pretty rapidly. And then when I shave it off, it's just perfectly smooth. Parmesan palms. What's the longest I've ever gone without doing this? Well, as a kid, I didn't do it at all. My parents tried occasionally with razors and clippers and knives and whatever I would let them do to delicately remove it, but technically years. And uh, I couldn't use my hands at all. I had trouble writing. Uh, I couldn't feel anything with my hands and they were so dry and painful that um, 
I really couldn't use them. So as an adult, having figured out over the last 20, 25 years, I'm 37. So since I was about 10 or 12, I've been on a journey to figure out what works best. And now, of course, I have all these routines and tools and I just don't deviate from them because it works great and it's it's mindless for me. I'm not even thinking about the shaving. I'm reading the chat and thinking about what you guys are saying. I'm not even looking, although you can tell I'm not looking because I just cut myself by accident. But I, I, I can do it in my sleep. The condition is called diffuse epidermalytic palmoplantar keratoderma. If we break that down, diffuse as opposed to non-diffuse means it's in a designated spot. So in my case, it's just on my hands and my feet. The people who have non-diffuse, everything else I just said, have it all over their body in random patches. And that is painful. People ask me if this is painful. No, not really. Although I did cut myself a few times. I cannot even feel these cuts because it's still not deep enough that I've gotten to the nerves. It's just, there's blood vessels there. So the blood will come and it'll stop bleeding in a minute. I don't have to do it every day, about every two weeks. So it grows back slowly. It's been 10 days since I did this hand. So that's the thickness. I'm going to take off up to an eighth of an inch in these really thick parts and a 16th to a 32nd of an inch in these thinner parts. And that's 10 days growth. I haven't done an acid peel I, unless you're talking about just like foot peels, mild acid peels. But I've never gone into like a dermatologist and done a severe acid peel because in all clinical studies, it has shown that it really doesn't help any more than soaking in water and scraping it off. There's no cure. What happens if I leave it is it grows so thick that it completely limits my hand's mobility and cracks all over the place and becomes very painful. I am going to do my left hand. I'm almost there. I have to do this fiddly part in the middle here and my thumb, and then we're good to go. Why live with something like this? Because apparently 7,500 people want to watch. I cannot use fingerprint rec uh, recognition. I was so thrilled when Apple came out with Face ID because I could finally use the locking feature. Yes, it will bleed if I do too much. I've been focusing more on the live than on my hands, and I've cut myself in a few places. But I can't feel these cuts. I could, like, I feel nothing. It's reached the blood vessels, but not the nerves. So it'll be okay. But I think for the next hand, I'm going to look at what I'm doing a little more. Does it help to moisturize, or does it make it worse? What a great question. Yes, it helps to moisturize, but only with the right moisturizer. The heavy oily creams for like, um, work, like working hands or like gold bond, um, they don't soak in and so they just build up and become a nuisance. I use uh, a water-based hydrating lotion from St. Ives. That's what it's called, St. Ives Hydrating Lotion. And it soaks in really well. I have to reapply it all the time, but it does the job perfectly, so... <sighs> Thank you for saying I'm inspiring. It's been incredible to see all the different people with rare skin diseases come out of the woodwork to learn about my skin, to share support. It's something I never imagined in my life I would experience. I'm doing this. Man, I can barely keep up with these comments. I'm doing this because I have to. My skin grows I have a genetic disorder, genetic disease, that causes extremely thick calluses to grow on both my hands and my feet. And if I don't remove it, it gets so thick that it's a big problem. So instead, I take it off all the time and keep it thin and retain my functionality. I can't get fingerprint identified. I can't do TSA pre-check or any of that stuff without going through like an extensive FBI background check because there's no general fingerprinting background push it through the system thing for me. It takes me about an hour per hand, sometimes longer. I know you guys are dying for me to do the other hand. We're almost there. I'm sorry. I have to finish this thumb. Sarah V, no. All of those heavy 
oil creamers, uh, oil creams just don't, don't penetrate. I have to do it every 10 to 14 days. Do I shave my feet too? Yes. Check out my videos. I have some of those. How do I know when to stop? Lots of people ask that. Um, I can just feel it. I'm sorry. I can't really get good footage of this because this is the angle I need to do this shaving. I should collect the skin. You know, I did once uh, just to find out how much weight I was actually taking off of my hands. And it's like half an ounce to an ounce of skin. You feel so bad for me. Thank you. I, it's okay. It's okay. Everybody's got to deal with something. Thankfully, most of the other parts of my life are pretty okay. So this is, the, this is my struggle. And if I had to pick up all the struggles in the world, this one isn't so bad. Is it harder to press buttons on my phone? With freshly shaven hands, I'm going to have a field day on my phone because it's going to sense my hands so well. But yes, as it gets thicker, it becomes like wearing a glove and it doesn't even register that I'm touching it. Did I have it as a kid? Yes, I've had it since I was born. Thank you. I, I was raised with some pretty far out there hippy dippy parents who taught me that you know I can be happy it's a choice and that attitude is everything and all that this tool is called a callus shaver you won't find any that look exactly like this because this handle is um custom made by my husband but um there are lots of varieties out there I have no fingerprints I have never soaked it in paraffin wax. I'm not sure why that would help, though. I mean, it might soften it, but it might also just... Because it's so um, full of ridges and things, I feel like it would like cling to it and be a big pain in the butt. No, my parents don't have it. They were as shocked as anyone else when I got it. Does it feel sensitive? Only as sensitive as your hands. So... You can feel feathers, you can feel textures on stuffed animals, you can feel a paper cut. And when I don't shave, I can't feel any of those things. Once I shave, like I can actually feel, okay, this hand I haven't shaved yet, we're gonna get to it really soon. This hand I have, and I unfortunately have a couple cuts that are still bleeding. Um, but when I pick up this skin, I cannot even tell that it's in my hand right now. I can't feel it. Whereas, I'm sure you could. But when I put it in this hand, oh my God, I feel the texture all over everywhere and it's amazing. Does it restrict movement? Yes. In fact, if you Google diffuse EPPK, um, you will see examples of people who have it very severely, who have never shaved it or cared for it, and their hands are basically fused into whatever position it rests in. Did my parents shave it when I was a child? They tried. My dad used to use like a face shaver that uses these same type of blades. This is a blade that goes in like those old fashioned razors. So my dad used to try and shave my hands with that, but they didn't cut deep enough. And so he would just kind of be fruitlessly there scraping at the top. When I was a kid, the best solution we found was to soak my feet for a really long time and then use some sort of pedicure knife or not very sharp kitchen knife and just scrape it away. But that does a very um, choppy job. So it doesn't feel great. Like you can feel all the ridges and lumps from the cuts, and that's not fun. So I try to be really soft and careful and precise and get rid of all the ridges so that I have a smooth, normal, more normal experience. But they did try. The best my feet ever, ever looked was um, one summer I spent at the beach, saltwater beach, in the sand and saltwater for two months. They never looked so smooth and beautiful. My fingers look terrible. Well, sorry. In my opinion, they look great because I can use them and bend them and I can feel things with them. Much better than having a thick callus that limits all sensation and mobility. Would pumice work? Pumice shreds the skin kind of like a nail file. It really is unpleasant and doesn't leave a good finish. This is genetic. It's hereditary. Sometimes it skips generations. Sometimes it skips multiple generations. I did a video about my son's hands the other day, 
And in there, I explain some issues to do with heredity and uh, whether or not it actually is hereditary in my family. We don't know. It is dead skin and it's living skin. There's actually not a lot of dead skin on the outside because I do exfoliate in the shower. But um, it's mostly living skin that is like 10 times thicker than your living skin on your hand. How does shaving benefit me? It allows me to feel things and use my hands like to write, to do anything. Have I tried magic eraser? (laughs) No, actually I haven't. Isn't that just like an extremely fine sandpaper? I feel like I would be there for 10 hours with a a magic eraser and it wouldn't even get down to the level that that I get to here. Does it hurt when I shave? No, unless I stupidly cut myself because I'm looking at the chat. But I can't feel those cuts, so it's all right. Do I wear rings? I wish. I don't almost ever wear my wedding ring because I have to lotion my hands so much. I'm always afraid I'm going to lose it. So here's the unshaved hand. Here's the shaved hand. And I predicted it would take me an hour, and it's been exactly an hour. So we're doing good. Hello, everybody. Thank you for hanging around. Oh my God, I have like never done this. What the heck does that whale mean? (laughs) Thank you. Okay. Since everyone's been waiting for it, here's the other hand. Um, This blade might be getting dull, but we'll give it a try. Usually I start up here, but I'm going to go down here first because this is the safest place to test the blade. Yeah, I've had it since birth. They stay shaved. There's about a week of it being really thin, and then they start to get thicker and more uncomfortable, and about two weeks, it's like intolerable to the point where I have to shave it. This condition is called Diffuse epidermal tick palmal plantar keratoderma Vorner type. If you want to Google it, you can probably search diffuse EPPK and it'll get you at least to the point where you can copy and paste the full name and Google that instead. Thank you. How much pressure am I putting? Ah, uh, pushing pretty hard, but it's also because this blade is getting dull. And I don't want to push too hard and accidentally slip and cut myself where I don't want to. So I'm probably going to change the blade here in a minute. Oh, yeah, it's starting to snag, which means it's about time to change the blade. If I don't shave at all, that's a good question, Beyonce Purr. I will get, the, the callus will grow so thick that I won't really be able to move my hands anymore. And then it will begin to crack and bleed really bad. Why is it only on the hands and feet? Such a good question. It's because it's a mutation in a gene that is only expressed, meaning that gene only influences something in the skin on the hands and feet, which if you've noticed, the skin on your hands and feet is different than the skin all over your body. It has fingerprint ridges. It also uh, reacts differently to water than like the rest of your skin. So that gene just happens to influence that specific skin only, and that is the one that is mutated. Does it change the sound when you clap your hands? Yes! (laughs) Oh, I've already started shaving. Now, there's no good way to do an example, but it'll sound really dry and papery as if I had like paper between my hands when I clap versus um, once they're shaved, they sound like normal things. And also, I can't snap unless they're shaved. Can you hear that? It's not a snap. Once I shave this off, you'll probably hear a real snap. I need to shave, change the blade about every hand or foot. So I used a half a blade. You know, it's a double-sided blade here. Let me take this one. It's a double-sided blade, sharp on the top and the bottom. So um, the... I'll use one side for one hand and one side for the other hand or per foot. And then usually it's time to change it. Since I took it off, let's just change it right now. This will go into a recycling can later. Mm. 
And I buy them in these little boxes that are very fiddly. Excuse me. Do I have to moisturize it daily, hourly, in fact? Okay, so my little trick is that I always put the writing right side up so that once I flip it and it's upside down, I know I'm onto the second side. Oh, look at that. Like butter. Do I enjoy shaving it? Yes, it kind of soothes my brain. So just like many of my viewers find, it's just relaxing. But also, um, it feels so good. Like my hands just feel progressively tighter and less comfortable until I finally shave it off. It's getting clogged. And then it just feels like such a relief to get it off. Oh, see, I'm bleeding. I cannot feel that cut, folks. It's because the blood vessels come up much farther than the nerves. So occasionally I'll just nick one, but I can't feel it. If I don't shave for a few days, it's just going to grow a tiny bit thicker. If I don't shave for two months, I, it would be totally debilitating to the point where I couldn't feel anything and I couldn't even like grip a pen, pencil. So uh, it's all about timing. How long does it take me? About an hour per hand. That's if I'm not doing the details. I posted a video today where I was using these clippers to clean up my fingertips, and that takes about an hour, doing all the fine details all around the tips. And then it takes about an hour to do the rest, which I generally don't do in the same day. So I do my fingertips and everything uh, on one day, and then a couple days later when it starts to really bug me, I do the rest. Does it affect sweating? Not as much as you think. It, the thicker it gets, the harder it is to sweat, but I still sweat through it. Because again, it's like your skin on your hands that sweats, but it's just way thicker and very waxy from all the keratin. So it takes a while for the sweat to get through and can itch if they're sweating a lot and it's not coming through fast enough. I have tried e-files. Somebody asked about electric files. I've tried regular files. I've tried the thick metallic files that are much rougher. I've tried metal files, like for grinding metal. Um, I've tried a Dremel. I've tried an orbital sander. Um, it's not nearly as effective as using this tool. Do they stay red? No. They will look um, like this sort of more yellowy, pinkish color after about a day, sometimes like 36 hours. Yeah, so they'll stay really red like this for a day or two. Oh, I'm shaking because <laughs> I've had too much coffee. Merry Christmas. How did this happen? It's genetic. It happened in my mom's womb if it's not hereditary. If it is hereditary, then it happened when I was conceived. Um, the disease itself is hereditary, but my mom didn't know, uh, nobody in her family or my dad's family has ever had it. So there's a big question mark when I do talk to doctors about this as to whether it was caused by some environmental influence while I was in the womb or whether it was just very recessive and hadn't presented itself in living memory in my family, but it was there at some point. We don't know. It's called diffuse, epid uh, diffuse epidermolytic palmal plantar keratoderma. Sorry, I'm choking on my spit. Warner type. You could Google diffuse EPPK. Also in my bio, I have a little list of links with some good resources with lots of information about it in case you want to learn more. Thank you, Jason. Everybody, this moderator is one of my best friends. And he offered to come in and help me manage it. And I'm like, I don't know if anybody's going to watch. But if it gets crazy, it'd be great to have somebody helping. And look at this. It's freaking crazy. What was this one saying? Did you try dieting and cutting some food? Will that reduce the growth? Interestingly enough, I was raised vegan. Again, those uh, crazy hippie parents of mine. And then I was vegetarian for a long time. I've eaten meat. I did raw foods for six months, which made me feel incredible, but had no effect on my hands. It's not an immune system or gut health or lymphatic system disease. It is a genetic mutation, and unfortunately, there is no cure for genetic mutations. Do I flush the skin? I throw it outside, and the birds and the worms eat it. It's like gone in like a day. 
I live on a farm, so a, a wannabe homestead farm that I only bought two years ago. So it's <laughs> it's pretending to be a farm at this point. We'll get there. But uh, I can just throw it out in the bushes and it'll disappear really fast. Otherwise, I throw it in the trash. What age did it onset? One week old. And when I had um, my son, it also presented at a few days old. So that's a good question. What happens if I need to get a passport or something? I did get a passport. Uh, If anybody remembers Kinko's before it was bought by FedEx, I went to a Kinko's and like did my passport paperwork and had my photo taken. Nowadays, you probably have to go to some other office. But anyway, I did my fingerprints and they were just unidentifiable blobby blotches, but they accepted that. So (laughs) somewhere my fingerprints from one shave are on file as like my official fingerprints, but they look different every month. So there's no, there's no real way to get around that. And nowadays, fingerprinting is used a lot more, and I have not tried to go through those hoops. I tried to get TSA pre-check when I flew recently, so I didn't have to wait in lines. But it requires you to do go to a special office and do fingerprinting and a full background check. And I was like, fingerprinting, and I just I didn't do anything after that. Do my hands affect typing on a computer and stuff like that? A little bit. I can't feel those little bumps on the keyboard that tell you like where to place your fingers. And um, But I am a really fast typer because I've been a nerd my whole life. Um, but I'd say the biggest hindrance to typing is my nails getting too long too fast. My job is online, yeah. So I work at home and I don't have to deal with a lot of the normal stuff people have to deal with because I have always tried to build my life around uh, adapting to what I'm dealing with instead of trying to fit myself into a box I don't fit in. Anywhere else in the body, just hands and feet. If I don't remove it, it grows way too thick and it cracks and it doesn't bend and it becomes totally debilitating. How did my parents deal with it? They tried everything they could think of. We went to lots of different doctors. Western medicine, natural medicine, functional medicine, homeopathy, Chinese medicine, Ayurveda. We had different diets. They used different blades, lots of different systems to try and help. Nothing has ever changed it. Was I shocked when my son had it too? I was disappointed. I expected that maybe all my children would have it, and that was always my fear when I was pregnant, that I was going to have a child who had it or heaven forbid something even worse. Like there are varieties of this disease that cover your whole body. Um, but thankfully my son has the exact same variety as me and it's easy to manage. And my daughter doesn't have it at all. Can I fold my hands? I can now that I've been shaving them. This one's still a lot harder to make into a fist cause I haven't done the fingers yet. Whereas by comparison, I can squeeze this one into a fist, but like this one, Oh, I'm sorry, that really hurt. <laughs> I can't really make a fist with this one right now because the skin is way too thick on my fingers. Am I doing my feet too right now? No, I'm sorry. This is the only downside to this being my only content is that once it's done, it's done, and I can't do it again for a couple of weeks. My son's feet really do need to be done, so that'll probably be my next set of videos once I do them. But I still have some footage of me doing my fingertips and um, my son's other hand, which I haven't posted yet, so that's probably going to be the, the newest, newest content, and then I'll do his feet. And then I'll do my feet, and then we'll be back to fingertips, and then back to shaving my hands again, and probably just go on that loop forever. It does make my nails grow really fast and really thick. Interesting, you want me to protect the animals from this. Do they not eat dead carcasses lying on the ground? Like, it's fine to eat my dead skin. Does it affect my mental health? Um... I think, if anything, it makes me more resilient. People who face their debilitations head-on tend to be some of the strongest, coolest people. And I'm not saying that I am, but I think it has made me stronger and happier. I appreciate life a lot. I appreciate what I have a lot because I know it could be worse. I don't know, maybe I just have a really positive attitude. It's not on the back of my hand, although it is here. These little dots are pretty typical for the disease to have knuckle pads. but And it grows up around my fingertips like this. They're really red because I clipped them off recently, and that's just the reaction I'll have for like a day. And then I'll go back to being regular color, which I can show you tomorrow. Am I married? Yes. 
I have two kids. Chemical peels really have nothing on me. Lucy Clark, it's on my knuckles too. Yeah, this is a pretty typical presentation, just to have what they call knuckle pads. I clipped these off with the clippers yesterday when I did my fingertips, which is when I do all of this skin and up here under my nails. So I'll just do this ring all the way around here on one day along with my knuckle pads and maybe anything along the sides that's really getting thick. And then the next day or two after that, maybe a few days after that, I'll do the full hands, which we're getting close to the end here. The fingers take the longest because they're the most delicate, so we'll be doing that last. Have I had it all my life? Yes. Can I wear rings? Yes, but it's uncomfortable. What would happen if I never shaved them? They would get really thick, really thick and debilitating. It is genetics, Hinda Majed Zero. Um, it's called, if you search diffuse, E-P-P-K into Google, Vorner, V-O-R-N-E-R type if you want to add more, but just diffuse E-P-P-K should get you to a search result answer, and then you can copy and paste the full disease name. Or in my bio, I have a small linky list that has some links to some great articles about it if you want to learn more. Did it affect me in school? I was homeschooled um, until second grade. In second and third grade, I went to like a homeschool, public school hybrid situation with a lot of interesting kids whose parents were homeschooling them in the 80s. And um, <clears throat> so I wasn't really affected in those environments. But once I started regular public school in fourth grade, yeah, I got bullied. I got picked on, but only by a few kids who were really nasty to everyone. It wasn't like I was necessarily singled out. Um, it does, it does affect my ability to like hold a pen or pencil. Yes, my nails are thicker because of it. They're very thick and they grow super fast. I have some gel polish on top of these, but only like two coats, but there's no flex in these nails. They are really strong. So I tend to wear them long just because I enjoy it and because they can stand up to the demands of daily life without breaking. I could put my wedding ring on a necklace. It's kind of large and um, heavy, and so it, it feels very awkward to me on a necklace. But I do wear it like when my husband and I go on a date or if I'm going out to somewhere where all my friends will be there with their jewelry on and everything, I'll, I'll put it on. But I don't wear it all day, every day, because it, I have to take it off a hundred times. Answer the bee sting question. I've never had a bee sting on my hands, so I don't know. It probably would like get stuck in there because unless it's freshly shaven, this skin is so thick, it would be like not able to penetrate. Um, I've only ever had a bee sting like on my arm once and on my leg. What am I doing? I am shaving the thick callus off of my hands, which is a genetic disease that I have and I have to take it off every two weeks or else it becomes a big problem. Can I do my fingers now? You guys are <laughs> into it. I am living in some crazy parallel universe where I am actually showing this online and I can't even believe it. Hold, please. I need to take a breath and drink a sip of coffee. <sighs> it doesn't hurt. Have I tried climbing? Yes. I was into rock climbing for a couple of years and I loved it. It was actually really great for me because, because I didn't use my hands for most of my childhood because they were so cripplingly thick, I don't have almost any grip strength. I have very little muscle strength in my hands. And um, so rock climbing was easy for me because of the heavy callus in that respect, like it didn't hurt, but um, also was an amazing way for me to build up my grip strength and my finger muscles, which I just never had before. It's bleeding because I cut a little too deep. Um, the blood vessels come up farther than the nerves and I have very little sensation. So I can't I didn't even know I cut it. It doesn't hurt. I just wish it would stop bleeding. And if you look at this hand, you can see I cut myself here, 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 here. Just teeny little nicks. I don't feel it at all. And as soon as they've dried, I'll wash them off and it'll be like they're not even there. Do I have to shave it daily? Thank God, no. That would take my whole life over um, about every two weeks. Can the extra skin be used for skin grafts? I don't think so. I don't, I don't know the science of that. I think that has to be actually living skin that is like precisely removed in layers. And um, I, don't, I don't think I would 
be able to contribute to that. Thank you so much, Jason. You're doing an excellent job moderating. OVU, thank you. What did I do? I was born with a genetic mutation. Hello, everybody who's recently joined. I am shaving my hands. They develop a very thick callus on them. Um, it's called diffuse EPPK Warner type. There's lots more information in my bio if you want it. <laughs> Jason is going to joke about getting some cut of like any money I might make on TikTok because he had the idea to do it and he's helping be my monitor moderator. I love you, Jason. <laughs> see if I actually make any money and then we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. My nails are way thicker um, and strong and they grow very fast. This is only a couple weeks growth and they're like more than an eighth of an inch long, almost a quarter inch long, somewhere in there, three sixteenths. <clears throat> Another suggestion to use a Dremel. All right, you guys, we have some time because I am flying through this. I can't believe how quickly I did this. Usually it would take two hours to do these hands. It's been an hour and 20 minutes and all I have is fingers left. So let me get my nail drill out. Just to do an example. Also, let me move the pile of skin back a little bit. Okay. I use this to take off the gel polish and I usually use this metal tip, but we'll take that off. And I have some sandpaper tips that I never use. Oh man, I can't get the box open. There we go. Okay, so this is a tip with sandpaper. I think it's like 100 grit. No, it looks more like a 200 grit. All right, don't mind the buzzy, whirly noise. I'm gonna show you what happens. It helps, but it would, even if I had like a regular Dremel, it would, it would not do the same job as the shaver. I cannot even feel that. Okay, so first of all, it's gotten extremely hot to the point where I don't want to do it anymore for a second. And that's saying something when these are skin, um, when this is skin through which I usually cannot feel heat. I'm just picking the thickest part of skin here. So it's taken off barely anything. It's extremely hot. And it's, yeah, it's just not removing the skin. This would be a great finishing touch for like down here if I needed it, but it actually kind of makes the skin fray up and be more abrasive than when I just do the smooth shave. So there, that was my quick example. I've tried, it, it is not the same. It doesn't perform the same as it would uh, with a regular callus. Feet take longer. The skin is generally thicker and the um, surface area is larger. Yeah, I, it's a great to see all the suggestions for the, this um, nail tool. This is just a simple little one that works great for my nails, but just doesn't help my hands. I've, I've tried a Dremel before. In fact, anytime I've been, oh, Hope you guys are still there. My internet is popping in and out. Would the hand peel masks help at all? In my experience, no. Although I am going to buy a couple to show in my videos because I'm curious. There's some brands I haven't tried. And I know the audience is very curious. So it would be nice to be able to show. Will it be passed on to my future kids? I already have two kids and I do not plan to have more. And one of them has it. Thank you, Jason. Is my sound back to normal now? It says I have a good connection now. 
I have satellite internet because I'm in the country, so sometimes it just drops for a minute. Is it sore after shaving? No. Feels like your hands feel. Like I finally have sensitivity and flexibility and softness and it feels great because this skin is very restrictive. So as it grows thicker, it gets tighter and more uncomfortable as time goes on. I'm trying to figure out how to do this so I can still be on camera. Normally I would probably do it like this and then you can't see anything. So I'm trying to adapt to the filming. Yes, thank God, no soreness. I am blessed. Some people who have this, they can't shave it or it is extremely tender and sore underneath. It presents differently in every human. In my case, and it might be because I just have been doing it for so long, I know exactly how much to take off, but it doesn't get sore. Good evening from the Netherlands. Good afternoon from the United States. What did the doctors say? The doctors ask me, what the heck is this? And I provide them literature because nobody ever knows. But <laughs> um, the doctors whose literature I have read uh, know it's genetic. And they say that regular removal with a blade is the most effective solution. And that is what I do. Natalie, yes, this is what my son has as well. In, in the case of the most recent video I made of him having his hand shaved, that was about as bad as I will ever let it get. He had been not wanting to do it over the Christmas holidays, and so I put it off. And then the first couple weeks of school happened, and we were just really busy. And sometimes he's just fussy and doesn't want to do it. So I have to wait for, you know, give him autonomy. I have to wait for him to kind of be like, ugh, Mom, can you work on my hands? And then, then we'll do it. I'll jump at the chance to take care of it. I do find it satisfying. Does it itch? Yes. What was it like being diagnosed? In my mid-20s, I finally went to a doctor and said, I have this. Can you please confirm that? And he had never seen it before. He was fascinated. He took pictures with his cell phone to share with his colleagues with my permission. Um, took pictures with his camera in his office for like official files and um, did a whole bunch of other research on his own and contacted me like a week later going, wow, I've never seen this before. I confirm that you have this. Uh, other than that doctor, I have never met a doctor who's known a damn thing about it, including dermatologists. It's that rare. So I don't blame them. Like you're going to study the things that the majority of people have and not the more specialized rare things. Um, but in, in every case, I have had to be the one doing the educating and bringing information to the table, and then they can make suggestions after the fact. Have I ever let it grow out two to three months or more? I did once, um, about 15 years ago, do an experiment where I waited about three months to shave my hands, and I will never do it again. They got so incredibly thick and painful. I couldn't use my hands at all, and therefore spreading my hand open even just to shave it was causing cracks and fissures and bleeding all over so never again there's no medication it's a genetic disease so until we have effective gene therapy that can actually reverse genetic damage there is no solution how did i shave my son's hands when he was a baby the answer really is that I didn't. I soaked him in the bath when he would take baths, and then I would take like a plastic knife, something really not sharp, and scrape it off. And then um, I would use the clippers on his finger pads because they were so tiny. You know, like two or three clips with these would get the skin off. And um, honestly, most of his childhood, he has chewed it off. And I have intervened as much as he will let me. And in the last couple years, he's finally let me actually shave it. I've let him watch me do it a lot. So he's become more comfortable with it. But I do let him have autonomy. If he doesn't want to do it, we don't do it. And when he decides that he wants to do it, then I jump at the chance. Hi from Spain. Does my kid accept that he has this condition? How's he doing? He's doing great. He, um, he really doesn't pay much attention to his hands or feet. They just are what they are. And when they bug him, he's like, Mom, do something. And then I do. This is a razor. It's a callus shaver. It is a blade here. It's a double-sided blade that sets into this holder. And then this little piece goes in the little hole. 
click and you can flip the blade. Uh, there, there are really no creams that help, just lotions that I can use to moisturize with and I have found the one that I love the best. No, it doesn't peel off. Thank you, I'm glad you find it satisfying. A lot of folks have said that they, um, they really are soothed, either their OCD or their anxiety or their dermatillomania or whatever it might be by watching. So I'm happy to provide footage for everybody to feel better. I have to shave about every two weeks, sometimes less. Vaseline really doesn't help. Um, Vaseline just sits on the outside and makes my hands slimy. It doesn't soak in. Um, it basically makes my skin oxygen deprived. So it starts to stink and it starts to feel like I have a plastic bag on my hand. Um, I have never found Vaseline to be helpful. Ouch. Coconut oil also is the same as Vaseline. It does soak in a little, but it is so greasy uh, that I have to wash it off, at which point I remove all the oils and it's not worth it. It's the moot point. <sighs> I'm shaving my hands because I have a rare genetic disease slash mutation that makes extremely thick calluses grow on my hands and feet. There's no cure. If you want to learn more, I have put together a little link page in my bio. If you click the link in my bio, it'll take you to a couple of articles online about the disease and a lot more information. And from there, you can copy and paste the terms and Google those and learn even more if you're that curious. Not every day, thankfully. I do it about every two weeks. I have tried Chinese herbs and acupuncture. As a child, my parents tried absolutely everything. There is no way to reverse genetic mutation in our world as of today. That is science fiction. Thank you about my nails. I do them myself. And actually, it's probably going to be part of my videos on TikTok because doing my nails kind of also has to do with working on my skin. And I mean, I might as well... If I'm going to show everything else to do with my hands and feet, I should show the nails too. Try Aquaphor. Man, enough people have recommended that. I will try it again. I feel like vaguely I tried it maybe a decade ago and it just was kind of disappointing. But at this point, y'all have so many incredible suggestions. I am willing to try. Also, I do have a mailing address on my little linky page in my bio if anybody wants to send me something that they know really works. I feel really weird saying like, oh, send me things. But I have had so many people reach out saying, you have to try this. Can I please send you a bottle that um, I have the address out there? So if you want to mail me something to try, I will try it in a video if I get it. Have you ever been at the nail salon instead of doing them by yourself? Yes. Um, in fact, that I used to have, I explained this in the beginning of the live, but there are a lot of different people here now. I used to have the skin grow up my nails, like the quick of my nail, which if you don't know that term, it's like the part that still has blood and nerves in it, grew all the way up to the top of the nail. And it was extremely painful to remove. But I started getting acrylic nails in high school Mind you, this was more than 20 years ago when there was no such thing as gel nails and all that. Um, and the nail tech ladies told me if I had them cut it down a little bit every time I came, they'd be able to get it to the point where it was like a normal nail, not growing up the inside of my nails. So I let them do that. It was extremely painful for like two years of my life. But ever since then, I've been able to maintain it and have normal nails. But I'm just too much of a control freak slash the skin is so weird and people don't know what to do with it that I just do my own nails instead of going to a salon. This is a great question. Lexi Parker XO, does it affect your confidence and make you self-conscious or have you just matured and accepted it? Yes and yes. Um, I have always been extremely self-conscious. There was a um, time in my childhood when I would not let anybody see my feet bare. Like I would wear socks or shoes always. And um, I would try to hide my hands or just like not use them. I was on YouTube a long time ago and I just like never showed my hands if I could help it. Um, but... I have been on a long journey of self-acceptance too. And all of my, the closest people in my life, my friends and boyfriends, and now my husband, of course my 
immediate family when I was growing up were so accepting and loving that I've, I've learned to just accept this part of myself. And in fact, now doing it on TikTok, it's to the point where like, I'm, I don't, I wouldn't say I'm proud to have it, but do you know what I mean? Like I, I own it. I own it. This is my hand. It's fine. I have two kids. A file would not be better than shaving. This skin really does not react well to a file. It becomes more rough. And um, it becomes more like sandpaper itself when filed. Unless, like we were doing earlier with the nail dremel, you can get it to a smooth state, but it's still rougher and more textured than if I just shave. And I prefer the very smooth feeling of the shave. So it's my preferred method. Did it stress me more out while I was pregnant? <laughs> no. The first time I was pregnant, I was stressed the fuck out because my mom was dying of leukemia. The second time I was pregnant, I was stressed the fuck out because I had an infant already. Um, I think that was a lot more stressful than <laughs> this skin. <clears throat> no, only one of my kids has it. Jason. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty dark time in my life. Postpartum depression's a bitch, too. I cut my finger. Does it hurt? I hate to show this on camera because I, I feel like people must have very strong opinions about it. I can't feel it at all. The nerves don't extend that far out. So although I've hit a blood vessel and so a little bit of blood is coming, I can't feel it. I have a little rag over here. I'm wiping it on. How much skin is on that table? That's all we got, folks. I'm almost done. Thank you. Never, never feel bad recommending things. I mean, nobody knows, right? This is unique. It's rare. Everybody's going to have questions. And I don't mind them. I'm not going to get snippy. But sometimes I sort of forget that all the people in the live here now are probably not the people who were here an hour ago. So I'm like, I already answered that. And then I'm like in my head, oh yeah, I actually haven't answered it to this specific audience. So I just have to keep answering the same questions over and over and over and over and accept that that many people are curious. So thank you for being here. It's just on my hands and feet. Yes. The skin grows. Um, it's hard to describe thickness, probably about an eighth of an inch every two to four weeks. It kind of depends on the seasons and, uh, how active I am, how much I'm lotioning, um, how much water I drink. I think probably these are all minuscule factors in this, the rate of growth. But I'm taking off, I mean, anywhere from like 128th to an eighth of an inch right now, depending on the thickness. And that's the maximum thickness is about an eighth of an inch. And that's two weeks growth. <sighs> I've tried the Aveeno moisturizers, too oily. I really need a water-based moisturizer that will soak into a waxy skin that's already pretty self-moisturized. Was it hard to shave my feet while pregnant? Yes. Yeah, I would do it in like bursts and take breaks. But as you've seen in the video of mine where like my foot is way up on the counter, I am pretty flexible, so... It is better to do it dry, although I wouldn't classify this as dry. I'm almost done shaving now, so this is my only example. The pinky, right? Oh, and my thumb, where I haven't done yet. So this is what we would call dry, but it's obviously not dry. It's very supple from moisturizing. If it was actually dry, like I hadn't moisturized in over a day, this would be very dangerous. Um, but if I soak them, this doesn't work. It works like on the back of your hand where it just doesn't grab anything. It's too rubbery and smooth. So this is the sweet spot. Well lotioned, but not soggy from water. Does it hurt? No. No, it feels great. My hands just slowly feel more and more trapped inside the cage of skin. And so taking it off feels wonderful. This takes about an hour per hand. That's just to do the big shaving like I'm doing now. It also takes about an hour per hand, no, a half an hour per hand to do all of this fine fingertip work all up here and over here. That is a separate day's shaving. I rarely do it all in one day because I just get exhausted with it. But um, 
So I do all the fingertips separately. And that's about a half an hour per hand and then an hour per hand to do the big shave. Have I tried soaking in Epsom salt? Yeah. None of the soaks do anything except make them swell up like a sponge. It doesn't help the um, dryness level or the shaving ability. Yes, it does feel very tight. Will we see your face? Maybe. I'm not shy, but I feel like the content that my followers are looking for is shaving and clipping content. So I feel like starting to show my face might be deviating from what the general interest is. So we'll see. Speed clips. Thank you. I am so grateful that I am inspirational to people. I, I didn't know if, uh, how it would be received. And I'm really glad that it's gone this way. Do I cut myself often while shaving? Well, as you guys who have been around a while saw, I cut myself a handful of times here. But they're like these little teeny cuts that I can't feel. It just happens without me even realizing it's happening. Um, big bad cuts? No, not, not in decades. So I, I might show my face. I I'm not worried about like exposing my identity or any of that. Um, but I do feel like the focus should be on the condition and how I take care of it. If someone had it on their whole body, would they have to shave it all? I don't think you could shave it all, but there are people who have it on their whole body. There is a different variety of this disease that there was a documentary on NBC like 20 years ago about it, 15 years ago, something like that. And um, those people have to like take baths in lotion multiple times a day. I could not even imagine. Do I have much feeling in my hands? Yeah, after shaving, I do. So I would say this is akin to about your skin. I still can't feel textures. Like here's my bag of tools. I can, it's pretty textured and I can feel it a little bit. But like if I use the back of my finger, I can feel that there's like tons of bumps and ridges and different material changes. And some of them are like shiny and some of them are matte. I can feel none of that with these fingers. I can just tell that it has some texture to it. It feels like jeans to me. Does effective use of your hands once it gets hard? Absolutely. They become um, pretty locked into position and I can't spread my fingers open wide without cracks and a lot of bleeding. And nor can I make a fist. At the beginning of this live, I showed that I couldn't make fists. And here we are now that they're shaved, I can do it. I'm about to go, y'all. I'm going to do my thumb, and then I have to go, actually, because I need to get my kids from school. Okay, I'm starting to get too deep. Like, I can tell that I'm going a little too deep here, but there was, like, a, a ridge that was bugging me. Somebody said in the comments on one of my other videos that they couldn't imagine doing the clippers or the shaving because it leaves like ridges between all the cuts and that, that bumpiness would bother them. But I guess I just have so much practice that I can eliminate the ridges. I can feel them and then take them down. How long do I wait between each shave? Approximately two weeks, sometimes a little less. Good night, UK. Thank you for joining us. Is there anything I can't do at all because of this? I cannot be fingerprinted. Uh, is there anything else? Probably not. My finger is bleeding, I know. I'm sorry, I don't want you to have to see that. I can't feel the cuts, so it happens and I'm like, oops, and the, it's a pain in the butt because it's bleeding, but I can't feel it. Does it itch? Not really. Is there a limit to how deep I can shave? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, as you've seen, if I go too deep, it will cut it to the point where you're reaching the blood vessels and it will bleed. And if I go way too thin, it will um, just be extremely sensitive. <laughs> what color hair do you have? You give me brunette vibes. Yep. 
definitely a brunette nerd over here. Sales 010, zero, it builds up. Um, you guys are making me think about volume and like length and duration of time. Answer questions I've never thought to answer. Um, it's about an eighth of an inch every two weeks. In some parts of my hand, it's more like an eighth of an inch every month. In other parts, it, it'll get up to like three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch over the course of a month. I never let my hands go that long. Am I worried it'll get worse when I get old? Only in the fact that I will have less of a capability to care for it. But the condition itself won't progress any faster or slower. Uh, as far as any, any research has shown. There's nothing you can do to slow it or speed it up. Did my parents have to shave them for me when I was a kid? Yeah, yeah, they tried. We didn't have the right tools. I did tea tree oil soaks. I did Vaseline and socks overnight. I did eczema creams. I did homeopathy things, Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, functional medicine, Western medicine, diet changes, Indian healers, coconut oil, chemical peels, you name it. They really were concerned with helping me. Thank you, parents. But um, nothing, nothing made any difference except for soaking and scraping in water or shaving it off with a blade, which my dad used to use a shaver that had the same blades as the one I use now, these blades. Um, of course, now I use a callus shaver, which uses these blades, but he used to have one of those old-fashioned razors that's double-sided for your face, and he used to use that. <laughs> professional doc do it if you have the time you'll feel so good after do you have eppk i'm a leo my only saving grace is i'm a libra moon is it worse in the winter i had a theory that it might have been um so I kind of really monitored it over the seasons for a couple of years. And actually, as far as I can tell, it's not affected by the seasons. <laughs> Such Leo vibes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I have the confidence of a Leo. For sure. What's happening? I am shaving the calluses off of my hands, which at this point it's going to be really hard to see because I'm basically done. But they grow super duper thick. You can see more on my videos. And uh, every other week or less than that, I need to shave it off, which I'll probably almost always be doing on live. How do you know you aren't shaving down too much? I can feel. It's like a combination of pressure, resistance, knowing, and pain. For example, I accidentally cut myself here. I cannot feel that, which I'll have to reiterate over and over so people don't worry, but I have hit blood vessels, but I have not hit nerves. I can't feel it. It's just bleeding. And I do sanitize my tools. Does it hurt? Not taking it off uh, and not existing with it. But if I were to let it grow too thick, say go one or two months between doing my hands, yes, it would hurt a lot, especially because... It's like a hard shell on this part of my hand. So like if you look at your hands in resting position, meaning they're not flexed or clenched, it would grow so thick that this would be my kind of permanent hand position and spreading them out like this would cause cracking in all the flex points. Professional doc, I see. You're welcome. Most, yeah, most doctors I've seen over the course of my whole life of every variety have never heard of it before. And I'm usually the one bringing literature to them and saying, hey, did you know about this? I think I have it. Now I am certain I have it because I've done so much research. But um, I've never been genetically tested for it. So that would be the next step, I guess, if I wanted like an absolutely official meticulous diagnosis would be to get my genes analyzed. Hello everyone who's joining. I'm shaving my hands because they grow a super thick callus. 
and I need to remove it or else it becomes debilitating. And this is hard to do because I typically hold this differently to shave my thumb, but I'm trying to do it on camera. I am going to have to forego getting the best camera angle in order to just do it correctly. It might look like I'm not doing much here, but you can see the skin like slowly building up in the razor. I'm taking off teeny tiny little layers here. I have a lot of finesse with this tool with so many years of practice. Thank you so much, Jason. 23 and me. That won't tell me much except for my ancestry, isn't that right? What I need to do is go to an actual genetic testing place where they test for like rare diseases and mutations and do an analysis that would tell me more about the specific genes that are mutated. And it takes a long time to sequence someone's whole. Alarm to start getting ready to go get my kids. Sorry, I gotta finish up here. I'm gonna be on live for about two more minutes and then I'm gonna go. Do I have any pets? I have lots of cats and one dog. This has been so fun, you guys. I have never done a live in my life. What a, <laughs> I was gonna say what a high, but I don't know if it was a high. What an anxiety inducing, bizarre experience. <laughs> I'm glad that I experienced it. I will do more. Can you eat it? I wouldn't. Is Jason my husband? No, he's my best friend. I need a mod. When I first started this live, I had over 8,000 followers, so, or viewers. So yeah, I asked him to pop in. <laughs> Love you, Jason. I asked uh, him to pop in and do some moderation in case it got wild, and it was a little wild for a while. Now it's way more chill. My husband is on TikTok, but not, he doesn't make TikToks. He just looks at videos. But Jason makes videos and um, is just way more well-versed in the app. Plus, my husband's at work, so he is the moderator of choice. He's my gay. Yes, that's right. He's a beautiful person. You should check out his profile. Name a positive from my condition, if any. That's cute. Um, I can pull things out of the oven barehanded when it's like close to shaving day, and I don't feel it. When I was a kid, I used to walk out on our deck, which had asphalt on it, barefoot. And my parents would be like, ah, you can't stand out there barefoot. And I would just be totally unaware that it was burning hot. Same with cold. I live on the West Coast. Best coast. This condition is called diffuse EPPK. If you Google that, you'll learn more. But I also have some great uh, informational resources linked to in my bio if you want to learn more. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Holy shit, you guys. I think that is the fastest I've ever shaved my hands in my entire life. I don't know if it's because I was focusing or because of the adrenaline and the coffee. Like, I went faster. We're done. With the exception of a couple little nicks, which will be fine in like an hour. I did all my fingertips and all this area yesterday, which I have footage of and not all of which I have shared on TikTok yet. And then I did the big shave of the hands today and I think we're done. Sometimes I come in and clean up with the clippers, but I don't really have time. And also I did a really good job with that blade. I feel like I leveled up in this today, which is serendipitous considering this is my first live ever. But yeah, I don't think I've ever done it so fast. It's been less than two hours. <laughs> Look at the link in my bio. It has more resources and the name of the disease and more information about it. I have to shave about every two weeks. Do they feel sore afterward? No, they feel great. I feel like on top of the world right now, I also have an adrenaline high, not only from the shaving, which is a little bit like tattooing, like where your body just gets hyped up for this delicate and potentially painful activity, but also from doing the live. <laughs> Toya Hotai. Oh my God, my mom, her family, and her brother have that too. I've never seen on other people. Me too. 
This TikTok experience is the first time I have met any other humans that have this. I've seen them in clinical studies and trials and research papers, but I've never actually met one. No fingerprints to answer a user somebody somebody's name, their question. Do my nails build up? Not like the callus. They just grow super thick and super fast. And probably the next thing I'm going to do on TikTok after I post the the fingertip clipping, which I haven't posted all of, my son's other hand, which I haven't posted all of, and then parts of this live, which anybody who missed it will get to see some of that when I take the clips and put them up. Um, I'll probably do my nails on video because I do my own gel nails. So these I did very sloppily. I was in a hurry and I just like slapped some sparkles on. I didn't even put on an undercoat. But uh, that'll be fun. Does it hurt? No. Will the redness go away? Yes. This will probably disappear in about a day. Probably tomorrow they'll be more skin colored. Yes, I was born with it. <sighs> well, the audience is growing. I want to hang out and I wish I could, but I have to go. This was all the skin we got today. Forbidden Parmesan. <laughs> this is my life now. Thank you so much for watching. Follow my channel if you want to see more videos of this type of content and or you want to learn more about this disease. And please send me a message if you have the disease too. I love hearing from people. Thank you. I don't even know how to end this thing. How do I end it? Oh, I think it's a little power button. All right, guys. This has been wild and fun. Goodbye.